Right, Steve, okay, okay let's, let's not get personal here, okay? You made your point, Derek's made his point, let's just leave it there, okay? Thanks for that. Let's go to David in Presswick now. Hi, David. Hi there, hello, panel. Hello, hello what's your point this evening? Okay, really, my point was to pick up on just, uh, funnily enough, the very last part of what the chap said there, and I'm not going to be in any way uh, insulting or anything, but there are some misconceptions which have been put out about the Rangers situation, particularly, I think, with regard to the fans. I've just heard on another station, I hate to admit, a really bizarre interview with Paul Murray where he stated that he has never seen the Rangers fans so united. Well, I think if that's what he really thinks, I think his floppy hair's falling over his eyes because I've never seen the Rangers fans so divided and so confused ever. And I think this is what the chap, I think, before we're starting to say, people are confused about corporate oh. governance. They don't really understand what a lot of the terms mean. And I think the, the point I was really hoping to make was the requisitioners, as far as I'm concerned, have failed utterly to make a convincing case <coughs> for taking over as being in charge of Rangers. And I think that's why we are where we almost certainly are tonight, the night before a crucial AGM. And what we're going to see tomorrow, as far as I can make out, is a very, very convincing win for the board. And I think that is in many ways because the requisitioners really have reached out to the wrong people, if you like. They've failed to convince the shareholders. Uh, it seems that all of the shareholders have jumped shit back to the to the board because mainly of the three new appointees, I'm, I'm sure. But also, I think where they've failed even more so is I don't think they've managed to, to get their message across to the bulk of the support. I think they've very successfully convinced the small-ish fans groups and certainly their leaders. But I think that's about as far as it's gone. And I think that's been their problem. And I think there's almost this arrogance that Paul Murray can come on the radio and say, oh, yes, 80% uh, of the fans... Two weeks ago, we held up red cards to say sack the board. Well, two things. For f first thing, it was nothing like 80%. It was between maybe 40 and 50 for a start. And secondly, it's been spun and reported as a sack the board protest. But on those cards, there were references to, to Jack Irvin, to Craig White, to Charles Green. And people were being encouraged to hold up the cards if they didn't want those guys to be involved in the club anymore. Well, Jack Irvin's a higher PR guy, and the other two guys have gone. But all we keep hearing is, oh, it was a site the board protest. Well, actually, it wasn't. It was a muddled protest. And I spoke to two people after that, and I said, did you hold your red card up? One said, yes, I did. I said, why did you do that? He said, because I want Charles Green and, and uh, Craig White sacked. And another guy said, yes, I held my, my red card up because I want to see Jim McCall voted onto the board. Now, that gives you a level of understanding of what people really thought they were doing. They were giving an indication of some general unease. But they weren't saying, yes, I want the board sacked. And this is really my problem with the requisitioners. I haven't been impressed with their, the style of their um, campaign. I haven't been impressed with the content of what their plan is, because I think their plan is, vote for us, we're Rangers men, and we're different from those guys, because those guys, they might be a bit dodgy. So on the strength of that, please vote for us. Well, that's not near good enough. You're never going to convince institutional large shareholders of that kind of rubbish. And frankly, you're not going to convince most of the fans. And I speak to fans all the time about this. Most fans are just saying, I just want it over. I don't care anymore. Just get it over with. But this idea, and this is really what, what I object I don't like this idea that if you're a real fan, you vote for the requisitioners because only they are real Rangers people. I think that's dangerous. And I think what really I'm concerned about is tomorrow it might be a, you know, quite a nasty, quite a, an unpleasant scene yeah, of the... I and I really right. don't want... And if you take my point, does that make sense, guys? Yeah, I think, yeah, you're, I think you're right. I, I understand what you mean, David. Yeah. You, you have to remember on both sides, the current board side and the requisitioner side, there are two different avenues of communication. Both sides have got to communicate with these institutional investors who own large groups of shares. We're talking here Artemis, Blue Pitch, Margarita. Yep. We don't know who, who runs these companies. Clearly, clearly the board do. They've yeah. got millions of shares, as Derek says. Yeah. And these guys will be asking the board and they'll be asking the requisitioners, how are you going to protect our investment? How are you yeah. going to build our investment? How are you going to make money for us? How are you going to, to improve our investment to get the share price up, to put a smile on our faces? Yep, and then agree. they've got to communicate with the fans who are saying, when are we signing a new centre forward? How, wh when are we going to be back in the top flight? Uh, How much money have we got to spend who, on Who's players? Ali spending? Who, who are we signing? When, you know, is the football going to be any better? You know, as Wally, one of the callers said earlier on, it's great this season, we're being entertained. Yeah, yeah you have been entertained, but you're losing a million pounds a month. So yep. I think the public pronouncements from Paul Murray the public pronouncements from the current Rangers board are probably different to what they're telling these groups of institutional investors. And, and, and this is where a lot of the confusion arises. And I think a lot, a lot of the discussions between the board and the institutional investors, and even when Paul Murray and the requisitioners are making their pitches to try and, to try and win 
the vote of these institutional investors. They'll be telling them different things that, that you know they're, they're trying to tell the, the man in the street and the man in the, the Copeland Road stand. Yeah. Sure. Sure, I accept those points indeed. I think you're quite right. I think my only point really is, at the end of that, uh, I think it's almost, uh, to me, that tomorrow will show, I think, a, con a convincing win for the, the board. And I think that speaks volumes about the, um, the, the quality of the discussions you've obviously held with the investors, because the investors clearly are more uh, inclined to go with the existing board, particularly the three new appointees, yeah. rather than this rather thrown-together-looking team of requisitioners. Uh, my, my worry, though, David, you touched upon it at, at the start of your call, is if yep. that does happen, and I agree, I, I would expect it to happen, what sort of reaction there's going to be from the rank-and-file shareholder who's at Ibrox tomorrow, and subsequent to that, the reaction in terms of season ticket sales for next season and, and sales of merchandise in 2014? Okay, thanks very much to David. We need to take a break now and we'll take more calls after this.